Lady Tarjan has called for you. Okay. Enough. I'm sure that you've heard the Mongols are on their way to Khwarezm. The palace isn't a safe place anymore. Start packing up whatever you have. We'll be leaving for the Lal Citadel in Tabaristan in an hour, so be ready. Does the Sultan know that we're going to be leaving? What I'm saying is the Sultan's orders. If it were up to me, I wouldn't have insisted on taking you along. I will give the clay and mud of this place and this throne to the Mongols. But I will never give them the Sultan's harem. Genghis is welcome to take the empty palace of Khwarezm Sultan. But the women and children of the Sultan, if necessary, I will kill them myself with my own hands and throw them to the Amu Darya. Hurry up. Go with her, take whatever she wants. No need. I am not taking anything from the Khwarezm treasury. There will be no need for help. Are you looking out for the scorpions, or are you just struggling to fall asleep, Kaka? May as well, maybe, yes. Do you think that anyone has ever counted these stars before? Yes, son. You mean it? Who? The one who counted the sands of the deserts, you know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what difference does it make, boy? A hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, or hundreds of thousands? Whatever it is, it's only proof of how great and powerful God is. The sky and the stars, the passing of days and nights, the change in the season, they're all signs of how great and powerful God actually is. Tell me, if I say your words, remind me of Sayed. I will say what I have said before. I want you to talk so I can listen to you. Tell me a story, Kaka. A story? <sighs> I don't know any stories, boy. Yeah, you do? Tell me. I might be able to fall asleep with your story. I don't know any stories that can help you fall asleep. No stories. But I know of a story that when I heard of it, it... It made me lose sleep, you see. It was a tale that wasn't a story. It was something that has really happened. And I heard it from someone and what had happened had happened to him. Once upon a time there, there was a thief in Belch that at night he would hand a snarl on his shoulder and pass through the alleys like a breeze and 
Like a shadow, you see. He'd climb up the walls in the darkness of the night and... <sighs> he was like a ghost wandering in nights of Balch. The authorities had offered a reward for his capture, dead or alive. That amount of reward had never been announced in the city of Balch until one night. A night watchman saw him. He saw him in an alley and wounded him and took him to the authorities with everything he had stolen. They announced in the city of Bal that anyone who had been robbed the night before should come and claim their possessions. Some claimants came, but they were lying, you see, and gave the wrong... the wrong information until they found a stamp in the stolen goods which was a sign of the owner of the goods, after all. They sent for him so he could come claim his belongings. That man came, but as soon as he saw the thief, he denied that his house had been burglarized. They showed the stamp to him, but he had lost it years ago. Then he left. The authorities of the city had asked the Emir of Balch to issue a ruling. The Emir said there was no one to claim the belongings. Killing this man then must be a much greater sin than theft itself. They put the thief in prison for many years on end. When he was freed from prison, he immediately went to the man who saved his life. He fell at his feet and swore that he would, that he would be, he would be his servant. That's it? For as long. But there was nothing surprising about it. As he is alive, Once Syed Bohan said that a shooting star is a star that will definitely die. Every single time a star dies, I think to myself, how many people are at the same moment staring at the sky like I am? What's going on? What's going on? Be careful now. Be careful. Greetings to you, my lady. As you can see, the wagon is being loaded. My horse? It's ready. As soon as you give the orders, then we will leave. Do not be so upset, O oh great lady. Your palace is the heart of your servants. If luck is really with us, we will be back very soon. Don't talk nonsense, Nazareddin. You know as well as I do that there is no coming back to this palace. No worries. When the Mongol sedition is put down, we will build you an even more glorious palace than the one you see now. Who is going to put down the Mongol sedition? You? Uh... But your health is my only wish, my Enough, lady. Enough, Nasser Even your lip service is not making me feel any better at the moment. Huh. By the way, did you know that you're standing on the heads of rebellious governors? Governors who the Khwarezm kings beheaded generation by generation? Huh. It's over. The 150-year reign of a dynasty established by a slave who the ruler of Khorasan had bought. You already know this. 
Sultan Muhammad Khwarizm Shah's grandfather was nothing but a slave. The dynasty that was established by a mere slave was eventually brought down by nothing but a bunch of desert-dwelling nomads. The Mongols have pillaged most of the cities, set the people's houses on fire. We have to think, we have to think of something. We really have to, we have to do something. We have to give the enemy the chance to tire himself out and then use the swords against them when they've passed through the mountains and deserts and don't have strength left. And this is what a sound mind would say. It is truly a great plan. We have to retreat to Khorasan until Genghis's men pass through the Transoxiana and tire along the way. Why go to Khorasan? I say we leave Khorasan to them too. And come face to face with the Mongols in India. What that means is giving up the land and buying more time for all of us. What do you say, Khoptedin? What the commanders are saying is completely logical. The passing of time is in our favor and against Genghis. What we should do is let the mountains and deserts of Khorasan and Transoxiana tire his soldiers out. In this war, the mountains and deserts and plains will be our soldiers. The land that you're so easily giving away to the adversary isn't your playground. What you are speaking about so frivolously is the land of Iran. What you're imagining is that you'll surrender that battleground and creep into your towers and citadels and wait for the Mongols to get tired. Which one of you has been in a city which is the enemy stationed outside its gates? Hmm? Have any of you ever thought about the people who've been caught up in this tragedy? Dispatching our soldiers to different parts of the land is not the right thing to do. Escaping from the enemy you've not even faced is considered shameful and indecent. I think that Jalal Eddin is being a bit harsh. Jalal Eddin is proud. His words are because of his pride. Is it pride? Or ignorance and madness of young age? We have to gather our forces. We have to use Amu Darya as a trench, and we shouldn't allow the Tatars to reach the side of Amu Darya. You have many more men than Genghis does. Let us use this fury of being attacked on our home soil as an advantage to unite instead of being humiliated and embarrassed in front of God. It's a shame for you, the Sultan of the people, and these men, your commanders, to run from the enemy. Don't let the people scold you. Face the enemy and fight him. Oh, my dear Sultan, I have new information from the royal palace for you. Tell me. I have found out the lady has left the palace and has taken the Sultan's harem along with her. The palace is now empty and the Mongol army is now on its way to the capital. Neishapur! We've reached Neishapur!
The elders of Nishabur are waiting at the entrance of the Sultan of Scholars. Sheikh Atar Nishaburi's men are also waiting at the city gates to welcome you. Sheikh Farid Adin Atar Nishabur is the greatest of scholars of our time. I saw him once on my way to Damascus. He's a true man, a great speaker. Nishabur is the gem of Khorasan. And Atar is the gem of Nishabur. The difficult road is the road that will lead you to your wildest dreams. Whatever you have wished for, you will be granted along to winding path. From destroying mighty armies to victories, conquering lands and man and mankind, supremacy over yourself, eloquence in speech and whatever there is, it will certainly all become yours at the end of it all. One must just believe and have faith. What shouldn't have happened has already happened. The Sultan will try to scatter his men all over the cities. Every commander will have 30 to 40,000 men that will head to Tamar's Belk, Samarkand and Bukhara. When days become like nights for mankind, then anything you do is of no use. Silent Jaladin. Go and let this old man get some sleep. We can still do something. Can't you see, Jaladin? When an army has commanders who are unwilling to fight the battle, how can you expect them to fight a one on one battle? Give me 30,000 men to fight. Tabaristan. We will go to Tabaristan together, don't worry. You should take refuge in Tabaristan and let me go fight! Have faith. And believe that we can overcome this. Go, Jalalidin. Don't make the last days of your father's life many more bitter than it already is. It will soon be time to say goodbye. Go, son. Go. Thank you. 